This is a really cool effect that you can use to apply a dreamy glow to your landscape photographs. <laughs> I think that this is an excellent lens. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Emma and professionally I'm a software developer but in my free time I love landscape photography and making related videos here on YouTube. Today I get to show you an editing technique that I don't use super often but I've been wanting to show you for a while now which is the Orton effect. Now this is named after Michael Orton who developed the technique by overlaying multiple exposures of the same photo on slide film where there was one in focus and the others were out of focus. I learned that on Wikipedia just now. Apparently he created it to imitate watercolor paintings, but the result is to give a really soft, glowy, dreamy look to your photographs, which can look really nice in certain landscape photos. Now today I'm going to show you this using a photo from my last photo shoot. So if you haven't seen that yet, I will leave a link to it for you to check out and I'll be doing the editing in Affinity Photo, but you can do the same thing in most photo editors and some even have a slider to apply this effect in one click. This is very easy to use, but like most good editing techniques, I think it can be overdone. So the trick is knowing how much to apply it. The Orton effect just requires a few really simple steps. Duplicate the image, blur the duplicate, and use the normal or lightened blend mode, and then lower the opacity. I like to make these changes at the end of my editing to the final result, which is what I'll do today, but you could of course apply the effect at the beginning as well. All right, so let's now take a look at how to actually apply this effect on the computer. I've got the image from last week opened up here. There's already a few edits applied to it um, that I've just kind of hidden for the purpose of this video. There's nothing really too exciting there. I just did a little bit of, you know, brightness, contrast adjustments and adjusting the colors a little bit. Um, so nothing too crazy, but we've got our uh, pixel layer here, which is just going to be the base image that we are going to work from. And the first thing that I'm going to do is duplicate this layer. Now in Affinity Photo, what I can do is just press Command and J, and that's going to make a duplicate layer. And now that I've duplicated that layer, I actually need to blur it in order to apply the effect. And so I will just go under, um, there's a couple ways you could do it. I could go under uh, the layer effects here, or I could go under the live filters and add this Gaussian blur or a different style blur. Um, I'm just gonna use layer effects, Gaussian blur, and make it nice and blurry. Uh, oh, we don't need it too blurry, but give it a nice blurring, something like this. And I'll actually check preserve alpha as well. Uh, you probably can't really see it too much, but if I hit the background layer uh, with it unchecked, you can see we don't have quite as much blur around the edge. So just go ahead and check that. And now we have a nice defocus layer um, with the same image on it. Now, the next thing that I'm gonna do is actually make a couple of adjustments to this layer, just with a brightness contrast adjustment. So I'll add that and I can increase the brightness of it. Um, so I'm gonna make it quite a bit brighter. We'll go around there. What that's going to do is it's going to give that glowy effect that's being achieved by the blurred layer a little bit of a brighter glow as well so that it kind of actually looks like a glow from light um, rather than just kind of a fuzzing of the image. And we'll add a little bit of contrast to it as well. Don't really need too much contrast, but that gives it a nice look usually as well. And just going to put that underneath of the pixel layer so that it's attached to it there. And then we're going to apply this effect to the layer below it. Um, you can use either the lighten blend mode or the normal blend mode for this. Uh, in this particular image, I didn't really notice a whole lot of difference between the two actually, and I ended up sticking with the normal blend mode. The light and blend mode you can see is kind of making some uh, brighter spots. So either way uh, looks best for the image. And then just lower the opacity down so that you get um, kind of a blending of the two that applies 
your blurred layer to it. Your goal here is to lower your opacity so that you can still clearly see the image, but it has this dreamy glow applied to it rather than just being a super blurry image. So I'm gonna pull it down to something like this maybe. I don't know exactly what I applied it to in the final edit uh, last week, but we'll go something like that. Now you can see there's a nice kind of soft uh, atmosphere in the back here, um, but it's applied all the way up through the foreground as well, of course, because it's applied to the image uh, very evenly. So what that's done is on the left hand side there were a lot of leaves that I thought looked pretty harsh and then in the back um, added a nice atmosphere, smoothed out those leaves. But I don't really like the way that it's applied to the bridge and because I'm applying this in a photo editor rather than uh, on slide film, I have the opportunity to actually unapply it from that area and I can do that really easily by just masking it off. And so I'll just add a mask layer Get a large black brush and just mask off the bridge and in one click I've removed the effect from a section of the photo that I didn't really want it applied to and then you can kind of you know use a smaller brush uh, just to be a little bit more specific about it maybe as well and by doing that you can see now uh, with the mask unchecked, the bridge was very soft as well, and so my entire photo had kind of a blur over it. And by masking off the bridge, now my bridge still is nice and sharp. And so I've got a real sharp subject in the image, but I've applied this nice atmosphere to the area around that subject. All of this background here has sort of that dreamy glow to it that I wanted. It's given it a little bit of atmosphere. And and just looks really quite nice um, and yeah I still have a nice sharp subject as well so that's kind of the power of putting a mask on top of the Orton effect uh, lets you separate your subject from the background more and give you a dreamy background while still having a really clear subject so that can be really nice sometimes as well one final thing that I did actually adjust on this image was I added another HSL layer on top it might be a little bit hard to see, but this uh, section right here in the trees has been just brought up with a little more saturation um, and made it a little yellower. So you can see that I, I pulled the hue shift over to make that a little bit golder in those leaves back there, and then I pulled the saturation up just on the yellow leaves. Um, and so that gave it kind of a golder look in the back, brought out some of those early fall tones there. So that is all that you need to do to apply the Orton effect to your photos. It's very, very easy to use, quick to apply, and quick to mask off as needed in order to keep a sharp subject if that's what you want as well. So that is all for today's video. If you haven't seen last week's video, don't forget to go check it out. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit the like button on your way out and to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss more videos that I'm really excited to share with you in the future. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.